Hello, everyone, and welcome to the hellhole. Folks, we are Local Chat. It's episode 44. It is today's date, the fourth of the 11th month of the year 2021. Joining me, as always, the lovely Ian Gibson. Hi, I'm back. Uh, look, that vaccine, man, it'll knock you over. That's why I'm against it. I took it, it knocked me out. <laughs> also joining us is the man, the myth, the legend, Kyle Bailey. Kill him. Kill him. I don't know why. I, Kill I, I, I went fast with the music. Oh my God. Um, my favorite episodes of Stargate are when they bring in the Russians. It's just the best. It's the best. The Russians. Um, speaking of Stargate, uh, Jason Momoa was in Stargate Atlantis. And he was also in Dune. Gentlemen, I like shaved Jason Momoa. He looks like a cool dad that I want to hang out with at the park. And maybe something he just looks like happens. Jeff Grubb. Uh, <laughs> yes, he also does look like Jeff Grubb. Um, <laughs> I saw Dune in IMAX. Um, it was incredible. Um, Did you actually like like the movie or are you talking about the experience uh i genuinely enjoyed the movie a heck of a lot uh and the experience was great uh the only problem was there was one light panel on the imax thing that was a little bit darker mm. than the other ones oh. and you only noticed it in the super bright scenes but it pissed me off and it also looked like they hadn't cleaned that screen in about 80 years um Oof. But other like Oof. the 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 sound and like shaking of the chairs and everything was like top notch uh, for all that. So I was it was good. I um I know we had talked about this before, and I don't know your thoughts. I have not talked to you about this, Ian. But I remember you saying you were worried they weren't going to handle the weird space cultures as well as they probably should because they really only showed off that atreides armor in the trailer and stuff like that um i thought yeah i was talking i was talking just clear i was talking aesthetically aesthetically yes know? totally yeah. and i i think i don't think he they 100 percent knocked it out of the park but i think no, i think 60 70 80 range as far as like people yeah. wearing cool stuff um different languages the the uh sodakar planet secundus with the like weird like, like Salusa secundus. Yeah. i think they nailed the like what the heck is going on aspect of dune pretty well um yeah i just i think i i think i agree with you 60 70 percent of the aesthetic i feel like they had one aesthetic that worked really well but there was not enough differentiation between the sodakar the Harkonnens and the Atreides. Like a lot of their aesthetic was very similar, but when you look at even like Lynch's Dune or Yodorowsky's concept art, or even just some some fan art of Dune, there's always lots more color and a lot more differentiation between them. And like that whole Seleucus and Cundus uh, scene where they have like the sacrifice and the priest going, but I am, I don't. If they had not told me that was Seleucus and Cundus, I would not have known it because it looked like Harkonnens. And so it was. Yeah. They had a very good aesthetic. They did not differentiate enough between the different factions. In that See, I didn't. I didn't get that at all. I like. I mean, even just through context of dialogue, you can. T I mean, like you. You never just rely entirely visually on something yeah. to differentiate. So I think that they did a fine job. This is coming from someone who's only read the first chapter of the first book. So mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any trouble differentiating. And you know, as far as like them teaming up, the, the Harkonnens teaming up with the Sardaukar, like I understood that. I understood what was happening and that they were the the Emperor's guard, sort of. Um, so they yeah. were like the badass fighters. Like I, I all of that felt adequately communicated to me. But I'm sure yeah. like if I had read the book, then I, I would have had like, oh well they didn't do this or they could have done this better. But as someone who didn't do that, I felt like it was communicated perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think it was clear. I just wish that there was a better distinction between the factions mm -hmm. um not because it wasn't clear but because there's so much opportunity for like these very very different cultures that have evolved because of that and it didn't really feel like it, it felt like they were almost too culturally aligned across them yeah the, the other thing um i'm pretty sure in the book the sardaukar dress up as the harkonnen anyways 
yes to disguise it and clearly so. in the movie they didn't and i understand why you want to visually I understand do all that stuff but the one other thing i want to say because this is not the dune podcast uh is i thought uh, along the same was? lines i thought the aesthetics of i like sh- uh sort of showing and not throwing cgi into your face worked really well like when a ship took off like instead of like doing a wide shot of this crazy cgi ship it was like the engines the lights turned off and the stuff's blowing against uh jessica and all that stuff and then the ship takes off and goes away like you see the outer hull and shape of the ship but you're left to like wonder like oh what is this huge thing look and i think them th- doing that and not over explaining everything kind of nailed that like fantastical magical element that is so prevalent in the books um as far as like space and sci-fi and stuff um i really enjoyed that uh in the movie it was good i, I want to watch it again yeah i think HBO it's Max. i think it's definitely the best dune adaptation so far which is a relatively low bar to clear but I just, the whole time I'm watching it, they were including a lot more than I was expecting. But man, it just, it needs to be like a 10 episode miniseries. It yeah. needs so many more hours in it. And like, I, I just want to call out, there was one line that was so frustrating why this was included in the movie when none of the backstory for it is there. And it's when, it's the flashback with Jessica and Duke Leto and he goes, ah, I should have made you my wife. And it's like two hours oh, yeah. into the movie and you're just like, People are assuming they're your wife because you haven't explained why it's not your wife. Like, that's, it hasn't been explained at all. So it's already been assumed and it was okay. Just leave it at that. And instead, there's just this throwaway line to the lore that is not explained at all. And it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I also found it weird. weird. They never explained, like, why people don't use laser guns and everything, which. Yeah, which is, it's a huge part of the second part, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that part of uh, Paul's plan? Yeah. So if I, I'm remembering correctly. And as someone who watched it, I would think most people would be like, oh, it's in the future. Why don't they have guns? I did think they they did a good job of showing, not telling why, like not why, but that people are computers now. They don't have computers. Like the like eyeball rollback. Clearly he's doing calculations. And and without, without having to explain the the, the butler and jihad and all that. Exactly. So I, I think they nailed that part, but it was, I was like, plant the seed now about the laser guns but i don't know maybe they'll retcon it and it'll, it'll be a giant squid at the end of the, end of the book. i did have one thing and this is more of a question to you because you've read the book more recently than i have so in the movie paul has visions but they're not accurate visions. some of his visions are not correct but in the book i remember it and, and most of this is me reading the later books is that all of his visions are correct he just doesn't know how to interpret them properly which which one is it in the first book? Um, I th- I think he has visions and he's not. I think he's just seeing things and not understanding them. Like he's not interpreting because in the yeah again in the movie he's not misinterpreting or in the movie he's not misvisioning. He's misinterpreting death. What death means because something he, dies and becomes like, something new. You know, kind of. But he also has these visions in the in the movie maybe i was watching wrong, but he had visions of things that did not turn out to be true almost like he knew what was going to happen and had to change them and that's that's not true to paul's character that just irked me a little bit because paul's arc overall across the first three books is very good and a lot of it has to do with how he deals with these visions and the movie was kind of spinning it differently and i'm a little worried about that yeah i need to i need to think on that again but anyways we're here to talk about video games <laughs> um sorry kyle um i love video games first we're going to talk about what we've been playing sorry i am so frazzled today uh especially because we were just doing extra life prep folks tune into extra life this weekend noon eastern saturday to noon eastern sunday Ooh, it's gonna be fun um games uh so on my list i had dune because i want to talk about it i have also been playing forgotten city uh kyle did i talk about this last week i did right mm-hmm. yes you a little did. bit yeah okay so i talked about this a little bit last week i'm almost done with it um i think they've done an excellent job with it it's got some rough edges i'm attributing that to like small team all that sort of stuff but I- i've been really gripped by the story and there was like a really cool revelation 
that happened that I was like, oh, what? <laughs> and was like thinking about it in context of like outside of video games and outside of that video game. And I was like, oh, that'd be cool. So uh, I'm really excited to finish that. Um, I played a tiny bit of Age of Empires 4. I want to dive back into that. Um, there was something. Oh, Mario Party Superstars played played 20 turns today. Um, other that than. Just, did, that, did that just come out recently? Came out the 29th. Yes. Okay. Uh, Target took forever to ship it to me. Uh, <laughs> other than a very suggestive Yoshi stamp that they have in the game, uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's weird. The way they, that's the way I described it to Karen after I like read or like watched the game a little bit, but it's the boards from the N64 Mario's. It is the mini games from some of the GameCube and some of the N64 Mario parties. Um, so when we went to the Spaceland board from Mario Party 2, they showed the old board and were basically mm -hmm. like, hey, on this site in 19 blah blah they didn't say it like this but they're like on this site there was a battle and then whoever won and became the superstar had to defeat bowser it was crazy like almost as if mario is now at an amusement park where this thing had happened beforehand it's like a mm -hmm. weird lore thing that they chose to do that i oh, kind of like, thought like was in framing device. yeah it's like we it's like we signed up for an escape room at the mario party space land so it's oh. like it was super weird how they framed it. Um, and I don't know if they intended it that way, but that's the way I took it. And I, I generally thought it was kind of neat. Um, so uh, I got that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I haven't been playing much else because I've been working. And then when I'm done working, I just make a drink and then I just watch TV <laughs> because that's... That's me now. Um, Ian, you want to talk about what you've been playing? Because I'm genuinely interested in it. Yeah. Guys, I did it. I did it. It took all year. Uh, I put a lot of effort into it, but I finally did it. I found it. I found Game of the Year 2021 and its <gasps> inscription. I Look, I want to talk about this game so badly. But I also can't talk about this game because on the surface, it is one thing, but there are so many surprises and shocking twists and like unique reveals in this game that. Look, this is not an exaggeration. There were probably five or six times that I had to put my hands on my face, step back and just go, oh, my God, what is happening? <laughs> what is happening it's insane this game is this is one of the best this this is game design at its peak so look, let me let me talk about inscription inscription is a roguelike card game um basically you are in a cabin um and you're sitting across from this weird guy and it's kind of horror themed so it's it's in the dark and it's just like a dimly lit table and there's basically scales and there's a playing table in front of you and then the guy across where you just see his eyes and you see his hands and you're playing this little card game. And basically the way the card game works is you have a deck of cards. Um, and to play the cards, most of them cost blood or sacrifices. So the idea is if a card costs one blood, it means you have to destroy one of your cards on the, on the, on the table already. So you're basically sacrificing existing cards on the table to play one of, your, one of the cards from your hand. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the beginning of each turn, you can draw from a deck. One of the decks has like your special cards. And the other deck is literally just rabbits, which don't cost any blood to play. They have no attack and they have one health. So the idea is typically most turns you would pull a rabbit, play it, and then sacrifice the rabbit to play a card that cost one blood. Um, and then as you're going on, you'll be doing things like, oh, I'm going to sacrifice three cards to play this three blood card. Um, it's basically like four lanes and you have your cards on your side. So you have one, two, three, four cards on your side, left to right. And then the opponent, who is this weird cabin dweller has four <laughs> slots on his side and it's literally just you know if a card is matched up with another card and they're facing each other then they attack each other or they do or they take damage from the other person if they're not there's no card in the way then you attack the the keeper the cabin keeper and there are scales there's literally a physical scale off to the side that has teeth in it 
and the scale is just like it's like a 10 point scale like negative like five your way five their way so every time you do damage to the keeper a tooth gets dropped in the scale and it goes one towards them um so if you do five damage in a single turn and assuming the scale was at the middle at the beginning of the turn then that's the end of the round and then it kind of kicks you to a map mode where you can go forward and get new cards or exchange some of your cards and then get into another battle. And it's a roguelike because you're kind of building your deck as you're going along. Um, now, I, I know what you're thinking. That doesn't sound that exciting. But I'm going to tell you two things that blew my mind about this game. And they're very minor and they're not spoilers. So you're sitting at the table, right? You're sitting at the table and you have your, your hand of cards you have the slots in front of you and you're doing the things and you kind of like look up and down and then you're like, play this card and then the scale's moving <laughs> like 10 or 15 minutes. The keeper's just like, he's like, oh no, I forgot the candlestick. Can you get up and go get it for me? And it's just like, you can get up from the table and you realize that the command you've been doing to like, look up, look down. If you press look down again, you get up from the table. <laughs> And you're in his cabin now, and his cabin has these, like, escape room little puzzles in it, and you just walk around the cabin, you know, almost like old school dungeon, like, where you're just, like, forward, left, forward, left, and you'll grab something for him, but there's puzzles in the room that if you solve them, you get more cards or you get bonuses, and then some of the cards are talking to you and their characters, and they, what? they sometimes, sometimes they're weird where they're just like, hey, play me, and whether it's a good idea or not, but other times they give you hints about the puzzles in the room, and, um... The other thing that is not a spoiler that I can tell you about, just to give you an idea of where this game is going in a way, is you also have items that you can get, like pieces of equipment that will help you. So they're not card based, but they're things, you know, like, um, for example, one of them is like, oh, you know, this gets this gets you some of your health back automatically. Or, oh, here here's a card in a jar. You break the jar and you get that card automatically. You know, one time things, one time tools that you pick up as you're going through. Mm -hmm. um when they're presented to you they show you three options and they're like pick one of them and one of them was a pair of pliers and i was like i don't know what this does and so i i pick it up and then like there's a tool tip you can pop to look at it and it just says like it says like use when your health is low and i'm like okay what? so it's a pair of pliers and i'm like okay so a couple rounds in my health is a little low and i'm like oh, man I, i'm not going to survive this unless i use that so i use the pliers my character picks up the pair of pliers and goes <laughs> pulls a tooth out and puts it on the scale to give me one health and it was just like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like this i i want to keep talking about this game but i can't because the crazier things that it does it's it's insane the amount of things that go on in this game. You absolutely 100% should play it. It's 20 bucks. It may actually be on sale right now for Steam. It's very inventive. It's very crazy. It also balances the difficulty perfectly. Like I wasn't crazy about the card game and the mechanics of it, but it never got too difficult where it felt like I had to master it to go forward. But you had to be good enough to go forward, but it gives you plenty of opportunities to do so. And the story that it tells, like it's... I saw somebody describe it really good, which is that it's less like a roguelike and more like the single player story of a card game. Mm -hmm. But the things that it does, the places that it goes, like I, I can't spoil it, but I just want to say what I have described to you is only a very small part of the game. Yeah, it's and it, sh it should be noted that this is from the director of Pony Island and the Hex. So if you've yeah. played either of those games before, you should know that what you're getting into is probably going to be more than what you think it is. It's, it's very, very Frog Fractions-esque in terms of uh, the cover is not the game. Yeah. It is, it's crazy. And Jake's been trying to get us to play Pony, I Pony Island. Yeah, Pony Island. I want to say Pony Express. Uh, he's been trying to get us to play Pony Island for a while. Um, just before we continue, um, I'm just going to switch us over to a Discord message because... Some of the audio is coming in a little bit weird, and I just want to make sure it's good. Oh, you mean switch us over to a Discord voice chat? Yeah, voice chat. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm just thing here. Great group DM, uh, and I'm gonna call you guys there. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Uh... Hi. Hi. We're back. Hi. 
That it's sounds fantastic. much better. Just play the game. That's all I want to say. It's 100% worth it. There is a demo on Steam. I don't know how long the demo is because I started the demo up and within five minutes I was like, I'm closing the demo, uninstalling, and purchasing the game. Nice. Um, so if if you're on the fence at all, number one, get off the fence and buy it. Number two, if you're still on the fence, you're a coward. <laughs> still on the fence, you don't know good game design when it smacks you in the face. Number four, if you're still on the fence, remember, I don't like many video games, but this is incredible. Number five, there is a demo if you want to try it out. True. Um, but just just buy it. I might buy this game. Uh, that sounds great. I It's weird to hear you talk positively about a video game. It's I want to talk about it so much. There are things that happen that are insane, but I don't want to ruin the surprise. I don't want to ruin it. Don't ruin it. Um, Kyle, can you ruin anything? Um, my life, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's true. At some point. <laughs> um, I might have already done that. Who knows? Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Uh, very much like Inscription, it is... Never mind. It's there's a demo. Like um, yeah, <laughs> there used to be a demo. Maybe. Um, remember demos? Ugh, God, I miss which one, demos. Which one are you on? Which which uh, which on, of the effects? I'm on three. I'm right at the end of three. And you've played three before, right? Yes, twice, yeah. twice. Okay. How are, how are you liking it? Because for me, I played one, and mm. then I played two, and I liked both of them, and then I got to three, and I played like four hours. And I can't tell if it's because I didn't like three or because at that point I was burned out of Mass Effect. Um, I so I actually experienced kind of the same thing where I was like three, maybe four hours into the third one. And I was like, I need a break. And I took yeah. like I took like two days or three days. I think I played something. Oh, you know what it was? I played a bunch of Back for Blood. And then me and my friend played this game that we talked about last week called Escape Simulator. And that was like mm -hmm. just a really nice palate cleanser came back to it and was like okay i'm in like I'm, i i'm in i think everyone does themselves a big disservice if they just try to barrel their way through the entire trilogy in one go because man it is tiring because it's a it's a lot of the same stuff and granted i think it's really well well written for the most part um i think the characters and what happens you know not counting the last like two uh 20 minutes or whatever it is um <laughs> i think that it's really good and um i definitely felt that sort of like halting sort of feeling of like man i i don't know like something feels a little different i think you just need a palate cleanser you just need to walk away for a little bit and then come back to it and it's fine mm -hmm. um three also it, it just feels it's it's so much more slick than the other two and even yeah. like the, the jump from one to two is huge graphically, but I think there's still a lot of the same systems are still piggybacking. And then they introduce within the first five minutes of three, there's like a jump mechanic. There's like all these like little tiny yeah, things. Which, weird which, platform yeah, yeah, which is like the jump thing is so stupid because it's like, yeah. okay, just hop. Like it's just like a little yeah. tiny hop. Um, but it's it's a lot more dynamic as far as like what the 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 character models actually perform within the levels and the levels are better and they're bigger and they're more complex so i think that that jump from like it, it's it's almost like it's like a this is going to be a weird way of phrasing it mass effect 1 is like is like a single a triple a game and mass effect 2 is like a double a triple a game and mass effect 3 is like a triple a triple a game like it's yeah. it, it has that sort of like weird sort of we're still finding our feet but we're getting better and then it's mm -hmm. like by the end it's like this is what a triple a game you would expect to look and feel like um yeah and i think that also goes along with like just the story of their development with the series and how they flesh things out but um yeah so i'm i'm at the very end of three i am i actually i played because in the legendary edition you get all the dlc so i did all the dlc except for the uh the, uh what is it called the Cit the citadel deal the hangout in your apartment dlc oh, which is like yeah. all this character building stuff um so oh. i saved that for the very end because it's it, normally it has a lot of like funny moments in it and stuff like that um where they make fun of like your dancing and and all that good stuff uh and then it doesn't really make sense within the context of the story because everyone's like okay like we're ready to go like start the crucible and you're like hold up i'm gonna take some shore leave for like a couple <laughs> yeah. days 
Um, right. But yeah, so I'm I'm right there at the end, and then I will finish it probably tomorrow, maybe. And then I don't know what I'm going to play after. I might I might have to do an inscription. Yeah. Oh. We we should man. I would love to have an inscription spoiler cast because. <gasps> I got to talk about it, but due diligence, I'm not spoiling anything, so I can't do it. Here. I, I appreciate that. And I think you did a good job of setting it up because now I knew about it and a bunch of people on Twitter are talking about how it's game of the year. And I think the fact that you think maybe it's game of the year, that's like that carries that carries some weight around here. So and honestly, total, it was maybe 10, 12 hours. It's it's pretty short. And it, I was playing it in like two, three hour chunks at a time where I was just like, I can't step away. It's good. I, I definitely will be picking it up and playing it at some point. And then I think we should also do, maybe we should just do a, um, is it uh, Dan Mullins? What's his, is that his name? I think that's his name. Dan, Dan Daniel, Daniel something. Mullins. Yeah, yeah, Daniel Mullins. We should do like, we should play Pony Express or Pony, Pony Island, not Pony Express. <laughs> Sorry, you got me that. saying it now. <laughs> Pony Island and then the Hex. And maybe we should do like a triple oh Daniel God. Mullins podcast. But but Spoiler what if there test. was a game called Pony Express, which was basically Euro Truck Simulator, but for the Old West postal routes? I think that'd be it's called Red Dead Redemption Two. <laughs> no, no violence. <laughs> no violence. You're telling me there was no violence on the Just Pony dysentery. Express? Just dysentery. Why would you diss Terry? He's great. Terry Crews. Um, oh, let's talk like about Terry. the news. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Terry. No. Um, yeah, let's talk about the news. I don't know why some of this Discord audio. It sounds totally fine for me. It's like rock solid. I'm, I'm getting like robo, not quite robo, but just a little bit from you guys. I, what's causing it? Eh, it annoys me. Sorry. Um, folks, it's time for the news, which means it's time to play the news theme, which means I'm going to click this button and turn it up before I click it. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What's up, news? How you doing, folks? There is so much news this week. I couldn't even fit it all in the document. That is a complete lie. There's like no news this week uh, because <laughs> nobody does anything anymore. They're lazy. No, that's a lie. There was actually there was a lot of news. This There's week. some news. Um, I don't care about any of it. Yeah. But First off, uh, news in the will department. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, look at it. I look, I wanted that. Look at and it. then my two factor was messed up, so I didn't order it. And I never even upgraded my Nintendo Switch online. And now I'm kind of glad I didn't because apparently it sucks. Not very good. Uh, I didn't upgrade either. I just wanted my favorite controller in wireless oh. form because. They did update Super Mario 3D All-Stars this week, and you can play Super Mario 64 oh, with the that, N64 yeah. wireless controller. Boys, I took this out of the box with white gloves. Uh, no, not really. But I held on to it, and uh, it feels like an actual N64 controller, uh, including good. the stick and everything else. So I wonder if they just, like, unsealed uh, a factory full of, like, 80 year old people and was like get back to work mm -hmm. and they just immediately started working again um pretty crazy anyways um that was how i wanted to attack that news segment uh anything specifically here jump out to you guys i, I didn't have time to organize the news thread this week so it's kind of free um, game as far as what y'all want to talk about the first one i mean it was sort of a little bit earlier in the week but uh skydance New media joins forces with Marvel Entertainment to create an all-new interactive title. Um, my friend, Nathaniel Winkler, worked at Skydance uh, for three years, I think, and now he's somewhere else, but I, that's the only like reason I want to bring that up is because I know someone <laughs> who worked there. Um, he was a technical gameplay animator, uh, so he's really good at animating stuff technically uh yeah so i i'm excited i mean i i think it, it this is this is uh i i'm i'm floundering because this is the amy hennig thing right yes this is yeah yeah, okay. yeah. i i i am not excited and i'm just gonna kind of think out loud as to why i'm not excited number one i'm ian number two 
is this is a Marvel video game. And what we've seen with Avengers and with Guardians of the Galaxy is that, and even with Spider-Man, is that this is not allowed to have any connection to the MCU. That they let you have the characters, but you're not really allowed to do much tying it back to the original, and you're not allowed to have the looks, and you're not allowed to have the voice. I'm okay with that. So it's exactly I like don't. the Uncharted movie and the Uncharted games. <laughs> yeah. So that that's that's the thing is that based on those two or three movies, it's like, okay, so. But the thing is with those games is that they try to make them just like the movies, but they're not allowed to be exactly like the movie. So it kind of comes off as this weird, like this weird, uncanny valley knockoff almost where yeah. they may be good. But at the same time, you're looking at it going like they should have just gone the extra mile and just made it an MCU game, you know, but they didn't. But that so is the, Iron Man looks weird. That's the thing everyone praised Guardians of the Galaxy is is it is a good game and they didn't they didn't reference or make it try to look like the movies at all. They just Wait, went full were comic book. Praising them for that? Yeah, Guardians because of the it, Galaxy it looks, is a great game. No, I'm not saying it's not, but when you look at it like it's it's the exact same witty humor as the movies. All the characters look like their movie characters, but not to the extent that No, they all look the like their comic book characters. That's that's what I was going to say. I think it looks more comic booky yeah. than like and Marvel also MCU-y. The comedy in the game is from the comic books because it did that before yeah. the movies even came out. I think I think I think that's a bad example because the comics, the movie and the game are all so close to yeah. each other that there's not even really a differentiation. I get well, my point I get just what being you're saying with Avengers. Like the yeah, Avengers, Avengers thing, 100%. Yeah, people, people lambasted them because it was like it yeah. looked like second rate knockoffs, like it just didn't look good. So I definitely agree with you there, but I think also like that game just has so many issues. Yeah. Um, whereas Guardians of the Galaxy is genuinely, but even, but but even Spider Man. Spider Man's a good game. You could even mm. say it's a great game. But for me, they took that story too seriously, and it was like, okay, so now you're just trying to do like a serious MCU style movie and try and set up this new universe. But mm. you know, it's it, I want them to differentiate, and based on the past Marvel games. I don't trust them to do it because they, they missed three times. They tried yeah. to just capture MCU. I, I mean, I, I like I like Sony Spider-Man way more than I like MCU Spider-Man. That's true. Yeah, and that's fair. I would rather have the games than the MCU. Like, I think they've nailed it. I think Guardians of the Galaxy nailed it. I think Avengers is the only misstep because I think they thought that was the easiest way to get people to buy their game was to make these almost Avengers, just, and it didn't work just, out. Just to be clear, you said you don't like Sony Spider-Man. You're talking about Insomniac Spider-Man, right? No, I, I do. Sony, Sony. No, he doesn't like. I'm so, he sorry. Yeah, like Sony no, Spider-Man. But, but Kyle's right. I like Insomniac Spider-Man. I don't like MCU Spider-Man. Yeah. Okay, because Sony. Yeah, because yeah, Sony, Sony yeah, was yeah, the wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, that's why I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I realized that as I said it. Uh, yeah, but I, I think the other thing is, as we all know, I don't like Uncharted. Amy Hennig was one of the like original creators of Uncharted, and I'm worried that this is going to have some of that same cinematic, mostly hands-off gameplay that Uncharted is known for. And so it, it this is just one of those things where I'm like, man, I think it I'm depends. Just not excited for this. It depends on what it is, because right now all we have is Marvel, and we need to get more specific about what character or characters are going to be involved. Because I think that will help shape sort of the the viewpoint of maybe someone like you who doesn't really care for her past work. Whereas like I care a lot about her writing more than like the style of gameplay that that she wrote for, if that makes sense. Like yeah. I, she like I was really I think everyone was sort of really excited for her Star Wars project and then that fell through. And it yeah. just feels like the past like five years she's sort of been a part of these different projects that have that have just not come to fruition and now it's like okay this is the thing that's going to happen this is what she's working on and it's like i just want to see i I want to see what she can she can put out there as a as a writer obviously yeah you know the game is not just based on writing but we'll you know i think depending on what the character is or characters or team or whatever it is that they're doing that will sort of inform people who are interested what sort of game we can expect so let me let me flip that around a little bit. What what do you want this game to be? What would make you most excited? Um, 
I know it kind of depends because I am a fan of Uncharted. I, I didn't really care for the third one that much, um, but I, I think the the first one sort of set the groundwork. Second one is great, and I really like the fourth one, which I know she was not she was like half part of. Um, I would like so. I mean, I, I'm a story first kind of person where mm-hmm. if if the story doesn't speak to me then i don't really care i'm not super invested just based on the characters that you're presenting to me i just went and saw eternals yesterday i did not care about any of the characters so nothing within that movie really had any weight to it even though it's sort of big bombastic end of the world kind of stuff it was like who cares because i just i'm not invested in the characters so i want something that i can feel invested in as far as the characters that I'm either presented with playing or presented with interacting with. That's like the most important thing that that I would want in a game. And then mm-hmm. secondary, I think I think I <laughs> I don't I don't want something um where uh, Dunky makes fun of this a lot where it's like this game makes you feel like Spider-Man. Like like it's just like oh it's like putting you in the shoes directly of said character or whatever. I think I want maybe something more than than just like, oh, you get to be Wolverine in Insomniac's new Wolverine movie. There's probably going to be some hacking and slashing and lots of blood. Like, I I kind of want something a little unexpected, but again, I don't want it to come to come at the mercy of the quality of the story that's being told. So again, it's hard to make these sort of predictions or, or things that I would want without knowing specifically what they're going to be working in. So it's hard for me to, to say that. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, like pie in the sky, I'm just thinking here. I, do you guys ever play any of the Lego Marvel movies? Um, no. Lego Marvel I played games? the Avengers one, or I think they mm-hmm. made an Avengers one. I played that for like an hour, but that's about so it. So I played them a little bit, and I remember people online going crazy for them a little bit because the roster was huge. So even though you're playing Lego guys, you could pick some weird roster character and get some, some, some aspect of his powers. So what I think a great Marvel game would be is X-Men. There's a campaign, a good story, but you're not playing as a single character. You're constantly switching between characters and viewpoints and powers for each of them. And then the multiplayer aspect is some sort of like left for dead type procedurally generated co-op where you've got a team of four X-Men and each of you is picking from a roster of, let's say, 20 X-Men. And you're you're grabbing them and you're going into these missions with with, oh, no, downtown's under attack by this enemy. And it's constantly changing depending on which, you know, it's it's literally randomized the missions, etc. Like that would get me excited. And I think another reason why I'm very pessimistic about this game is they don't have the balls to do that. Like, that's just that's not possible. That's not going to happen because they don't have the balls to do that. I think they're going to do exactly what Wolverine's going to be. They're going to do exactly what Uncharted is, which is they're going to pick some character or two characters, and they're going to go, this is their story, and we're going to have a very single player, very cinematic campaign. And that's what frustrates me, is there's so much good stuff in Marvel, and nobody has the balls, and or nobody's being let off the leash and allowed into that playground. And I really want that to happen. But I just, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, an x-men sort of style game where you can do multiple characters i i definitely think that could work and i don't necessarily think it's a it's a question of like having balls to do it it's sort of like we have to wait like the mcu is the front of the train you have to wait for that to sort of crest like they haven't introduced x-men but why the why because like like, like because what I said, Disney, the, Disney the copyright that's that's the only that's the only reason who cares no, but the games aren't, the games aren't tied to the mcu so yeah, why but, they, but disney so why has does... I Disney think, has yeah, say. Disney doesn't want a character to become popular outside in a different medium first. Yeah. But that's that goes back to my they don't have the balls. Yeah, I'm saying Disney doesn't Disney have the balls to let them off the leash. I'm saying yeah. game yeah. developers yeah, yeah, do. Yeah. yeah. It's still just like it's it's hard for me knowing all those constraints are in place, likely in place, and seeing the kind of like mediocre to better than I thought properties that came out so far from Marvel gaming. Why would I get excited for another one of those? You know? Yeah, I mean, I guess to go back to your original question of like what what I would like to see, I'd like to see KOTOR in Marvel. Like a KOTOR style Marvel game. Like create um, your own superhero and then make yeah, decisions in that world. Yeah, sort of sort of something Good like idea. that. That would be Good idea. that would be sort of what I would want as like a pie in the sky sort of thing. But again, 
I'm sure that's an idea that's been passed around a lot of studios that maybe have had the opportunity to work in something Marvel. But like you said, they've they've got the weight of the franchise over top of them and the weight of Disney over top of them. So yeah, there are constraints. But at the same time, I think a lot of the studios, Square Enix and uh, whoever made uh, the Avengers game notwithstanding, they've done a pretty good job so far with introducing mainstream known characters into their own sort of game franchises that have been really successful and done really well. So mm-hmm. at this point, it's like, if it's more of that, okay, that's just a good game. Like, you know, I, I don't have to be wowed every, I don't go to the to Marvel movies to be, oh, hey, this thing is so different than what came before it. Like, it's not, it's not necessary for me to, to like that's, that. I think for me, that's a problem is that yeah. if I'm going to be sitting down, I, I've even, I, I, I gave up watching Black Widow halfway through because I was like, I'm not enjoying this. I know it's probably not going to get better. I'm done. I, I, I've, I'm quitting way too late. <laughs> And I'm not saying I'm done with Marvel movies completely, but I am done giving them the benefit of the doubt and listening to all these fanboys go, it's another great Marvel movie when really it's just mediocre throughout. And it's just like, I don't want that in games either. If I'm paying 60 bucks, if I'm sitting down for 10, 15, 20 hours for a game, I don't want that mediocre experience either. That's that's not good enough for me, you know? And that's why I can't get excited for this because there are no indications that it's going to be anything but MCU stamp of approval mediocre. Yeah. You know, I think, I think that's totally fair. Sorry, go go for it. No, I just want to closing thoughts here uh, because I am God and I am the word. Uh, no, I just want to say to, uh, to piggyback off <laughs> of you guys, you? which I think is kind of what we all want is. Uh, <laughs> Shai <Halud. laughs> yeah. uh, I would like um, I would like instead of the Marvel video games playing second fiddle to Marvel movies. Uh, and s- instead of Marvel video games supporting Disney's movie efforts, even though they're not directly related, I would like to see a Marvel video game break out of that mold and become the cultural touchstone before a movie or TV show yes. can catch up with it. Yes. And I think the closest anything has gotten to that yet, and there's room for this because I can't think of every Marvel game, is probably the PS4 Spider-Man game only because... Matrix Online. Matrix Online. Uh, only the, the Spider-Man <laughs> PS4 game only because that is such a huge game. It hit PlayStations. People were talking about it. And people weren't always saying, hey, that Marvel Spider-Man game is great, just like the Marvel Spider-Man movie. Like People weren't immediately comparing it to the movie. They were just taking it's Marvel Spider-Man as its own thing and I want another game to do that, but fully break from the mold. So you can be like, yo, uh, you know that Marvel game that came out a f- couple years ago that was so good? They're making a movie based on it now. Like, I want the movie that's, to come from the game. That's not what I was kind of thinking, around. like like a KOTOR-inspired Marvel movie where it's like you kind of have your own character. And then it's like, oh, there's a movie with a new hero, not from the comic books, from the video game. Yeah. That, like, yeah. That's what we're... I think that would be really cool exactly i think i think yeah i think another idea with that is i so a couple years ago i read infinity gauntlet and the thing is infinity gauntlet the comic series it's only like six episodes or six issues long it's not particularly long but i the version that i got was 60 issues and it wasn't until i started reading it that i realized what they did at the time was there was like the six core infinity gauntlet issues but then every time some side character went on a side quest or was doing something and it talked about the Infinity Gauntlet, they put like a stamp on the front of the cover said like ties into Infinity Gauntlet. And I loved doing that because I ended up getting all these crazy side stories, like so much more backstory on Thanos and Silver Surfer and all this stuff and all these crazy weird little stories. Like part of the buildup was was how Thanos gets all these gems and each one was its own little riddle story where he had to trick somebody based on the gem type. And I would love for the Marvel video games to do that, to be like, look, Avengers 12 is coming out, but there's a whole lot of backstory that we're not going to talk about in the movie. You don't have to have for the movie, but like Rogue One in a way, if you want to see the events that lead up to it or the side events that are influencing it, you need to play this game. And yeah. that would be fantastic. Those, those side tie-ins that are fluffing out the universe and lore around it and that tie into the main MCU. That's another way they could do it right. They're not going to do it because they don't have the balls though. Yeah. I also think I also think they're not going to do it because games take forever to make. 
Yeah, that's and it's that's like true. they want that's they true. want a sure. I mean, I think it would be really cool if they were like, "Hey, we got five indie developers, and we are licensing them Marvel to, to you know, uh, we're giving them a license to do whatever they want within Marvel with whatever characters on this yeah. budget." Like, I think that would be pretty awesome. Again, don't think they're gonna do it, but yeah. that would be really cool. Yeah, and that's definitely Ian. You point out that was my favorite thing about back when I was big in the comics. Like six or seven years ago when Secret War launched, like is when I first really got into comics. And that was when I was like, oh, here's the mainline Secret War. And then here's like Planet Hulk. Here's blah, blah, blah. And they all tie back. So when you read the next Secret War, if you happen to read Planet Hulk, you're like, oh, that line he says in the main comic references that. But if I didn't read that, it doesn't really matter. It's a throwaway line. Um it's like that sort of thing is what clicked in my brain now that I need context for everything. And I think that happened to a lot of people and the movies do that in a way, but I think it's also the same thing. Movies take a long time to make. And then above that video games take a long time to make and below them, those below them, those um, comic books that come out pretty frequently. Not that they don't take as long to set up and everything, but they can churn those stories out and all that sort of stuff. So uh, it's interesting to see that kind of lined up and and where they're going. Uh, Enough about Marvel, except for Marvel's Midnight Suns was delayed. I just wanted to tie this one last piece of news in. Uh, This is the Firaxis game. Uh, It is coming out the second half of 2022. It is not what I want, but maybe it'll, I don't know. I just want XCOM this, 3. This is one of those rare things that is like, granted, you only get to make one character, unique character in it, I believe. But this is one of those games that when I saw it and saw that it was real, I was like, oh, maybe they are taking a little bit of a risk with some Marvel <laughs> property. You know, this is not what I expected. So kudos to them. I don't know if it's going to be any good, but they're stepping out there. Kudos give me XCOM 3. I don't care about your stupid Marvel game. Um, give me it's Civilization Mario Marvel. Marvel. Jagged um, Alliance 3 got announced. You can play that. I'll align your jag jags. <laughs> oh, well, all right. <laughs> Great show, <Love> Jag. <laughs> <laughs> what does it stand for again? Judge Advocate General. Thank you. I couldn't remember. Um, I put this one in the title, so we got to talk about it. Bowser pleads guilty to his crimes, has to pay Nintendo $4.5 <laughs> million. Dollars. I will credit um, my coworker for this headline it's very good um gary bowser who participated in the hacking enterprise to unlock nintendo switch systems has pled guilty to his crimes and agrees to pay nintendo 4.5 million dollars uh and he is still facing potential multiple years of imprisonment i really don't care about this other than the headline because i thought it was so funny um i don't know uh don't hack things folks it's (laughs) you don't Especially Nintendo. Also, yeah, I was gonna say don't <laughs> don't screw around with the Nintendo when it comes to their systems. The Nintendo. Um, the nin- the Nintendo. Oh hey, uh, uh, Diablo Watch Six has been delayed. <laughs> that was a really good joke, Kyle. Thanks. I spent thirty seconds thinking about it where you were talking about Bowser. Um, Should have done eight though, because four times two is eight. Yeah, but it's four plus two because it's oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> Diablo Watch 4 plus 2.0. To... <laughs> the end is now. 365 over 12. <laughs> um... Remix. Oh remix. Yeah, remix. <laughs> remix. Chain of chain of <laughs> bad business decisions. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Actually, I don't know. Is it pronounced remix or R remix? I can't. For some reason, <laughs> I think it's R remix. I don't think they know. Uh, oh, I don't think God. they know is the best line. <laughs> Um, yes, Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 have been delayed. No new release dates announced. You know, in the wise words of Reggie fils fuck them. Uh, <laughs> nobody cares. You know, Overwatch about... 2, <laughs> Diablo 4, it, like, makes sense why that exists. But Overwatch 2, Still just like Destiny sense. 2, has no reason to exist. Other really than some it. weird person being like, I think we can get more money if we release a brand new one, but also allow old people to play the new one too, and the new people can play with the old people. Like Overwatch 2 is basically <laughs> just Overwatch 2.0, but they keep acting it's, like it's a brand it's new It's basically sequel. just a coat of paint. <laughs> it's how That's to trick parents into buying a game a kid already has. Yes. Yeah, exactly. 
I don't know if either of you watched this. Uh, there were 15 minutes, actually, technically 18 and a half minutes of Elden Ring footage that came out today. Um, I think it looks bonkers. I think it looks good. I think a lot of things. I'm happy they, they're going to open world. Yes, That's crazy. I'm they added open world. It. They added waypoints. They added a map. It seems like they're adding a lot of things to help with the complaints without compromising what the game is. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that looks really neat. Definitely go check out that video um, to see if you're into that. I'm I'm just so excited. I pre-ordered the collector's edition, like a bad tarnished person I am. I was gonna say, um, don't pre-order games unless they're probably gonna be good. Um, that's true. Speaking of which, no, I'm just kidding. Scripture. We're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about Cyberpunk. Um, <laughs> it's out, folks. <laughs> we have to mention it at least once, but we don't have to talk about it. Um, God, yeah. that stupid, stupid game. I can't believe the, the open critic average was like, wasn't it like 75 It was or something? really high. I can't. Way too high. Because you brought it up in the mini game show and we were all like, yeah. really? <laughs> there was a Reddit post that was like, hey, what video game didn't live up? It was like, ask me, ask I, me, Reddit. Yeah, they were like, what there. video game didn't live up to the hype? And I had to scroll for a while and someone finally put Cyberpunk 2077 and the comments underneath it was like, yeah, but that game actually turned out pretty good and all this stuff. I was like, no, screw you. That game was like, no, is the biggest like, did not sport. live up to the hype. Yeah. Oh and it God. wasn't even people's hype. It was CD Projekt Red's hype. Like, yeah. Oh. oh, okay. Moving on, moving on. Moving, moving on, on, moving on, moving, moving on. on. Um, would you like to moving own on. your own Mario in Mario Kart and no one else owns it and only you can race Mario uh, because you own him and you get to put Mario need... coins inside of him? We need an NFT need alert. This. <laughs> this is the NFT news corner. I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so um, Steam banned NFT and uh, cryptocurrency blockchain games. Epic then said, come on over to our game store. We support them. EA said that NFTs and cryptocurrencies are the future of gaming. And I believe there's one more that I'm missing. Ubisoft. Yeah, Ubisoft said basically the same thing. Oh, God. And, I and just... Ubisoft production. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't understand NFTs. I don't understand that someone can own an image even though I have it on my phone. So... They don't um also you're destroying the planet so stop it with your nonsense um ian if i gave you 53 million dollars and then i said no why would you (laughs) why okay look we're talking about take two they had i believe it was a, uh, a stockholders call they said, "Great things are great. We've got a lot of revenue. Uh, Grand Theft Auto <laughs> sold. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. wait. Not- sorry, coming in right now, we've got our representative from, from Take Two. Uh, take, it, take it away. Take it away. Yes, things are great. We've got a lot of money. Uh, we sold 9 million copies of Grand Theft Auto V in the last quarter. And also, we canceled a $53 million project. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Which representative is crazy. from Take Two. Uh, so then, uh, Jason Trier uh over at business insider i believe let some uh shine some light on this and he said that it's hangar 13 formerly of mafia 3 and i believe some other projects as well who was building a uh a new superhero-esque multiplayer game called volt and they just found out it's been canceled basically when they told stockholders so some some of them found out via schreier's uh, yeah article about it which is like ooh, oh my gosh I'm yeah sorry. 53 million dollars into development already now i'm not saying this is the wrong decision but i do think it's kind of weird to just full-blown say we canceled a game and it cost 53 million dollars but i guess when it's that big you're obligated to tell your shareholders that i i yes. love the text here is cost of goods sold included a 53 million impairment charge related to the company's decision not to proceed with the further development of an unannounced title in its pipeline just like yeah <laughs> um it's it's i just saw this it's from the guy who tweeted this mike futter uh at futterfish um is that inappropriate to say hey watch it's your mouth yeah <laughs> um, but he said he said i wonder we have heard nothing from ghost story games which is uh ken levine's uh development studio which has been developing its lego narrative game for like eight years now or something i don't know Wait, i, I feel... thought they're doing bioshock now I don't no think. uh uh 
Yeah, I have no I don't idea. Think I don't think they are, are they? I don't remember. Anyways, though, the, like Hangar 13, previous Bioshock Studios, 2K Moran, all of them, it's just this big nest of studios putting out great games getting canceled, shut down, then putting out mediocre games getting canceled, shut down, putting out games that get canceled before they come out. It's just this weird nest where I feel like they just keep passing around the same like physical office structures and the same developers and probably the same people, managers and creative directors, et cetera. And nothing is really coming out in the last five, six years. So it's just, it's just a like, this is completely, I don't have any inside information or anything. This is just from reading Jason Trier reports, et cetera. But it just feels like they can't catch a break and maybe it's their own fault. You know, they, they really got to mix things up. I don't support shutting down studios, but maybe they should shut down this studio and spread these people to the wind because they they just do not have a winner anywhere recently. And that's I don't know what to do about that. If if the property's looking so bad after you put 53 million into it that you feel obligated to cancel it. Man, what do you what do you do? Good thing they got GTA. Yeah, that's our cash cow. Um, I think that's it for the news. Some of these other things uh, we already tackled. Um, I think that's going to be it. I'm uh, I'm gonna play the music and we're gonna get out of here because Daddy's tired. <clears throat> he is. Daddy's tired. How do I play music, folks? Thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to see more of our hot hot content, you can go to subpixelfilms.com and that will bring you straight to our YouTube channel. Folks, this weekend, Extra Life, please come watch and donate. Donate.subpixelfilms.com is where you can do the donating and the watching it's live on now. our YouTube channel. Yeah, it's live now if you want to go donate uh, and make us immediately spin wheels and stuff. Um, we are doing that noon Eastern Saturday to noon Eastern Sunday. as a, a November 6th, November 7th. It'll be 25 hours thanks to Our Lady in Love. Daylight Savings. Folks, if you want to hear us read from the Death Stranding novelization, both part two and part one, I will be running uh, number generators to figure out what page from what book and what paragraph. Uh, it will be fun. So please, please come tune in. We've got a lot of cool segments planned, and it's for charity. So, like, we don't get anything. We're just chubs. Um, Ian Gibson, Kyle Bailey, thank you for thank you for joining me. Um, I just I I just am ready for sleep. I don't know what it is about today, but I just need it, folks. I uh, you thank you for watching. I'm I'm gonna put this podcast up tomorrow. I'm not even gonna do it after this. Um, I think that's it. Uh, you guys got anything to plug? Extra life, plug it. Yeah. Same. Yeah, same from Kyle. Thank you, folks, and we will <laughs> see you all next week.